What's up guys, not Jason from Thin Line Defense. Today we'll be taking a look at some new budget entries in the first aid category. Today we'll be looking at the IFACs that just came out from Tacticon Armament. Now usually budget and first aid don't really go well together, but uh, let's break into these things and see what they come with. Now, full disclosure, Tacticon sent us these IFACs to take a look at. We have the IFAC V1 Compact. Comes in this really compact belt mounted pouch. And I absolutely love the way that this IFAC functions on a belt. We also have the IFAC V2 Standard. This is a good size to put on your plate carrier or to keep in your EDC backpack. Finally, we have the IFAC V3 Extensive. Now the V2 and the V3 have this tearaway platform but the V3 is a little too big for a backpack or a plate carrier. And I see this more as a car emergency kit. Now we'll dig into each of these in depth and show you the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. But first, let's take a look at Tacticon Armament. If you've been with us for a while, you may have seen a review we did on the Tacticon Armament Battle Belt. And for a budget battle belt, we still recommend the heck out of this thing. I even know a couple LEOs that use this thing regularly. And I have one set up as a home defense belt and practice with it regularly. Now Tacticon Armament is a combat veteran owned company. It seems like they've expanded into just about everything that can be related to the word tactical. We even have a set of their level 3A plates we're going to be testing. Now I'm looking forward to that video because I get to shoot stuff. But enough about that, let's get on the bench and take a look at these IFACs. And we'll start with the version 1 belt mounted IFAC. Just initial inspection before we open it up, we see the cross area has a couple color options you could choose from. So kind of a nice touch, but what's with the gray color? I would figure red or reflective would be better here. One of my favorite parts of the design is the ability to access it from either hand. The pull tabs also have material bunched up inside that helps ensure you get a good grip. And when mounted in small of your back on a belt, it's pretty easy to access it and that's convenient. Now this is very similar to the Blue Force Gear Micro Trauma Kit now. Like, very similar. Like, it's a clone. Now maybe you don't care about that, and that's good because I don't either. Now if it's just as good and one-fifth of the price, yeah, that's awesome. But let's get into the contents of this little guy. Here we have all the contents out of the plastic wrap and spread out. Now first thing I see, there's a lot of useless stuff here for an IFAC. Now, going through some of my other videos, I have my own opinions on what constitutes an IFAC. And they're pretty similar with a lot of the big first aid, first aid gear companies that are out there. Now, early in my military career, we were taught ABCs of first aid. Airway, breathing, and circulation. Now, as the military wages this 20 plus year war on terror, We've learned a lot. We've gotten tons of data on what works and what doesn't work in terms of trauma in the field. Now, I heard a stat recently that the CAT tourniquet, for instance, was used over 19,000 times on our wars in the Middle East. Now, with all that data came a better understanding of casualty care. So, the ABCs were sort of retired and a new acronym took its place, which was MARCH. Massive hemorrhage, airway, respiration, circulation, hypothermia. Now, I'm not gonna dive deep into why this changed, but just know that looking at all the data, it makes sense. Now, the main reason for breathing is to oxygenate your blood. But if you have massive hemorrhage and you're bleeding profusely, you're oxygenating nothing. So when treating someone, you follow the MARCH acronym, and when you've gone through it all, you go through it again. Now, with that acronym, in in mind, my critique or praise of these IFACs is going to be framed using the MARCH acronym. All right, back to IFAC V1. What do we have in here for massive hemorrhage? I see some compressed gauze and what the hell is a TPE tourniquet? Oh no. Is this what I think it is? Yep, their tourniquet. Look, I'm trying to stop massive blood loss, not donate plasma. This thing is useless for trying to stop massive hemorrhage. Now, some folks may say that hemostatic gauze is significantly better than standard gauze. Me, <laughs> I say that. 
But while researching this video, I found this amazing study. Now, I'll link to the study in the description, but it compared standard gauze, combat gauze, and Silox gauze. And their conclusion, quote, advanced hemostatic dressings do not perform better than conventional gauze in an injury and application model similar to a care under fire scenario. However, as we say on this channel over and over and over again, mission dictates gear. But so does training. If you train with combat gauze, buy combat gauze. But maybe you can save a few dozen dollars if you just buy regular gauze. All right, so the massive hemorrhage category is a little lacking. Having a cat tourniquet stationed somewhere else on your belt would be a good alternative. Or you could probably fit a SWAT T tourniquet in here. Maybe. Now next in our acronym is airway. This does have a nasopharyngeal airway or NPA. Now I've said this before, if you have no training, don't buy one of these. Now, I've had dozens of hours, if not hundreds of hours of training with these, and I'm still uncomfortable using them. It doesn't say it on the item list, but tape to the MPA is a little thing of lube, which is basically a must if you try to insert one of these. Now, for the general civilian, this is honestly probably the easiest way to deal with an airway issue, but you need to train. All right, next is respiration. And this usually refers to something that's affecting your ability to breathe, like a penetrating chest wound. Now, getting shot or stabbed in the chest can cause air pressure problems between inside your chest and outside of your chest. This can lead to your lung not being able to fully inflate. So you need a way to seal the hole to prevent outside air from coming into the chest cavity and to allow inside air to escape. And this kit does include a venting chest seal. All right, next is C for circulation. And I kind of feel like this is a catch-all. Now, here's where you want to make sure you don a fresh pair of gloves and check for any other bleeding you may have missed. Now, good thing this kit comes with, oh, oh no. What the hell are these things? No, seriously, what the hell do you expect me to do with these? Ugh, I feel like I'm working at Subway and some Karen's about to yell at me for putting on too much mayonnaise. Now, ditch these garbage gloves and get some bear claw or talon gloves. All right, the V1 IFAC also has some smaller gauze and tape to handle minor wounds. But if you have any other type of major hemorrhage, you're screwed if this is all you have. Finally, we have H for hypothermia. Now, this is pretty serious. If you've lost massive amounts of blood, you've lost body heat. Even if you're not in a cold environment, it doesn't really matter. Treat the hypothermia. Get them out of any wet clothes and cover them with the included space blanket. Now for this kit, I'm genuinely surprised that you have at least one thing for each of the acronyms in March. Massive hemorrhage, we have the compressed gauze. Now lose that stupid blood giving tourniquet and get you at least a SWAT T. For airway, we do have the NPA. Again, highly recommend you train with this before you even attempt to use this thing. Just don't go stuffing it up someone's nose. R is respiration, and we have the included chest seal. Now for a vast majority of basic first aid that you're gonna see, a chest seal is about as far as the average civilian is gonna wanna go. Don't even think about getting decompression needles unless you train with them. C is circulation, it's here where you reevaluate your casualty and find other life-threatening injuries you may have missed the first time. And don't forget some good quality nitrile gloves. Finally, H is for hypothermia, and this space blanket is definitely helpful in that category. But this other stuff is just junk, it's filler. Take that crap out and replace it with a real tourniquet, some good gloves, maybe a pressure bandage if you could swing it. Here's what I did. I kept the Mylar blanket, chest seal, MPA, and the compressed gauze. I added some good gloves and a marker. There's definitely room for you to fit a SWAT T tourniquet in here. If you really stretch it, you could fit a four inch Israeli bandage, but you can't do both. And I know they could package those Israeli bandages as flat bandages, so maybe that might be beneficial in this case. You could go with the Israeli bandage and then just make sure you have a cat tourniquet on your belt. And that's what I chose to do. If you do that, you have all of this stuff that won't fit. That's because this stuff is useless in an IFAC. If you're putting together a boo-boo kit, different story, but not for an IFAC. But that's all I wanted to cover for the belt-mounted IFAC from Tacticon, so let's get back on the bench and look at the version two. As I touched on a little earlier, this is too big for a belt, but would be great on a plate carrier or in your EDC backpack. Now, I do like the construction of all these kits. On the outside, we see this Velcro area that, and it does come with these two patches. In this elastic section below, 
We see an included tourniquet, and this is a Cat Gen 7 clone. I'm not a fan of these. On a true cat tourniquet, I believe this fabric for the windlass is Kevlar. It definitely feels different than the nylon located throughout the rest of the tourniquet. But on this clone, it's just nylon. I'm sure it's doubled up, but I don't know if I should really trust this. Ooh, let's compare them. Oof, that is not good. I'll say this too, getting three turns on the knockoff, no problem. Getting three turns on the legit one, yeah, I needed to use both hands. Oh, and for those complaining about me using this for testing, well, my toddler got a hold of this one already, so it's my testing tourniquet. Bottom line, if you buy this, ditch the knockoff, buy a legit cat tourniquet. Okay, under this flat, we see tweezers and some shears. Again, I'd see this on a plate carrier. And that's it for the outside. Let's take a look on the inside. And I'll try to save time here because this has some of the same stuff that we already went over with the V1. First, the organization here is really nice. And there's room to add some of your own stuff. Not a ton, but it's not super crammed in here. On this side, we see two packages of terrible gloves. I guess they're better than nothing, but junk them and get some good ones. On this side, we see the same gauze in the compact version, but the additions are one four x four square of gauze and then this roll. Not super thrilling, but there you go. Over here, we see a great addition in a pressure bandage. It looks like basically a four inch Israeli bandage. Here they are side by side. There's no expiration date on the Tacticon bandage. Can bandages expire? Also over here is the NPA chest seal and a marker. All right, so the compact is $40 and this one, the version two standard is $60. Is it worth the $20 difference? The Israeli bandage is eight bucks. The shears are probably four bucks. The pouch is probably worth another $8. Yeah, it's probably worth it. All right, let's take a look at the version three extensive. Just initial once over, this seems similar to the version two, but this thing feels like it's packed to the brim. But I see this in the car more than anything. All right, over here in the small zippered pouch is basically a boo-boo kit, band-aids, alcohol wipes, this little marker is in here, and safety pins. What are those for? All right, if this was the right, let's take a look at the center section. We see a clone cat tourniquet, toss it. We actually see some real tape and ace bandage wrap or a knockoff, and a triangular bandage. Oh, safety pins. Okay, two pairs of subway gloves, compressed gauze. Back here we see the presser bandage and a SAM splint knockoff. All right, over here on the left we see shears and tweezers, an MPA, two glow sticks. Behind here are two emergency blankets. This is definitely set up to treat more than one person. Finally, in this back pouch there are two chest seals. Then all the various individual gauze sizes and some non-clingy ace bandages. Now, as with the version two, I would suggest you ditch the knockoff cat tourniquet and get a real one. And the version two is $60 and this version three is $80. Now, finally what I wanna do is kinda go over all of these again very basically and then give my recommendation. For the version one, it is very basic. But for a belt mounted IFAC, I would buy this. Now, the pouch that this is copying is $50 all on its own. So to get this and some basic March items is a win all on its own. The version two is probably the one I like the most. Again, ditch the knockoff tourniquet and buy a real one, but the pouch is designed really well in my opinion. And the price increase seems to work itself out with the stuff that you get. Great for a little EDC backpack first aid kit. Now, the version three, I'm indifferent on. Sure, it's worth $20 you spend, but if you don't see yourself ever treating more than one person, you probably don't need this. Now, as with the Battle Bout, I am beyond impressed with these kits that they put together. The construction is sound. The functionality works as I would want it to. Now, there's some items I wouldn't want or I'd swap out, but I'm okay with that. And I really appreciate you guys sticking with me this long. If you're still here, you liked what you saw, hey, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. Thanks to our Patreons and our YouTube members. You guys make all this stuff possible and we wouldn't be here without you. And thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below, let me know what you think about these iPads. All right guys, catch you later.